hope you're doing well. It's Black Genesis with It's This Long, and we're trying a new segment today. It's called Two Pennies. Now, everybody just kind of like relax. We ask some of the people that uh, support us, some of our followers, some, you know, some of our friends and whatnot, is like, if they have anything that they want us to weigh in on and give our two pennies on, it's like to send them in. And the same thing goes out to everybody out there. You have any situations, anything, you know, personal stuff, things going on. It's, uh, you stay anonymous, of course. If you want to, like, hear our take on it, kind of, like, see, get a second opinion. It's like we're here. You can contact us through Instagram. You could contact us through Twitter. Contact us. We're around. We're around. It's not hard to reach us. But anyway... We're going to get right into it. First one comes from, <clears throat> from, <clears throat> and it says, I have three children. One of is a stepchild, and I worry about showing favoritism or neglecting them somehow. The stepchild has a relationship with their father, which is great, but I feel as though they won't see me as a parental figure, and I'm not really sure about my place in their life. Now, of course, when I got this one, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I got to see. So I wrote, I actually wrote this person back. I said, how old's the child? It's like, they'll be seven this year. And I also asked, how often do they have access to their biological father? Every weekend and anytime he wants, i.e. holidays, family gatherings, stuff like that. Okay. All right. So when it comes to this, when it comes to being a parent, even more being a stepdad, you want to make sure you have the proper mindset. Being a parent, really. You want to make sure you have the proper mindset. First, when it comes to being a parent, it is almost never about you. It's almost never going to be about you. What you should do when it comes to being a parent, you should practice consistency across the board. Don't focus on any type of favoritism, but you should focus on parenting a child to each child's specific needs. Not every child's going to need the same thing especially with this child also having access to their biological father. But first and foremost, you're supposed to be the tone setter in that household. You're the, you're the father figure. You're supposed to be the man in that house. And the best thing that a, one of the best things a parent can do is show consistency. So the best thing you can really do, you're trying to set the tone in that environment and have a healthy environment. You want to facilitate a healthy environment as a father. Also understand that you should also understand this is this is for people that like aren't in a relationship yet. But when it comes to you, like if you want to be with somebody and you know that you want kids and whatnot or this, that and the third, you should already know that being a step dad, especially to a child that has an active father, is a thankless job. On the other hand, it's no more thankless than that of a teacher. You should still try to be you should still try and set a good example. How's that old saying go? It takes a village to raise a child. You could be, you could play a very important role in that, even though you're not the biological father. And it's what you should do. The last thing you want to do is show some type of dynamic shift when it comes from, you said you had three children, going from your two kids to the other and actually have them see that and register it. It's like, this is the bed you chose to lay in, to be completely frank, which is why I say like when it comes to being a parent, it's almost never about the parent. It's about the child. That's the part that you're in now. And with the, f I'm assuming that the, I'm assuming that the seven year old is the oldest. And then you had two children of your own with this, with the woman. So yeah, in the back of your head, you know, those two child is like, they're yours. And the other child is, is someone else's, but you still have to play that role properly in that house. There's the selfish parent. There's the selfless parent. There's a bad parent. There's a good parent. You just have to try and find your way through. And the best thing to do is to practice healthy consistency across the board. And not and once again, I got to go back to it. Not every child is going to need the same thing. So, you know, you kind of modify it based on each child's specific needs. But that's the game you're playing now. That's the life you're leading. And that's the situation that you're in. Another thing when it comes to being a step parent uh, you got to make sure that you're working together with the mother of the child in question. You guys have to be on the same page when it comes to things like discipline, when it comes to things like, you know, how, where to interact. You guys really have to work together on this 
this is the op- this is one of the many obstacles for your relationship. And I'm not trying to say that the child is an obstacle, but it's one of the things that you guys have to keep in mind. You've hopped into this relationship with this woman and she's already had a child for another man. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad, but you have to be careful about how you kind of maneuver your way through the situation. It's more complicated than your average relationship where there are no kids in play when you enter. You guys have to be on the same page. There has to be good communication and try and keep a healthy environment for all the children. Let me know if these two pennies were actually worth two pennies. Maybe they were worth nothing. So like maybe they were worth a, maybe they were worth a nickel. Be sure to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, share. So like we're still trying to grow and hopefully we can have a lot of a uh, decent conversations moving through this. And if anyone has any questions towards that first one, we always look at comments. Sometimes we'll even do response videos addressing the uh, addressing our comment section directly. Just leave a timestamp. Let me see. All right. So next one that we have comes from <clears throat> from Louisiana. The last one was from Louisiana, but you know, Louisiana is a big place. I can just say Louisiana and it says if they just sent in a statement, just, just right off the bat. <laughs> it's like listening to sad songs is bad for you. If you are already prone to low moods, <sighs> I can see this being, I can see this being true, but not a true is not true across the board. I can see this being true, but not true across the board. Everybody is different. Some people are like addition and subtraction in math, where if they're already negative, you put another negative on it, it only becomes more negative. Or if they're positive and you put a negative on it, it will eventually become negative. But there are other people out there, me personally, it's more like multiplication. Where if you have, if you're a negative and you multiply it by another negative, it's going to be positive. I personally listen to low music whenever I'm feeling low because it helps cancel it out. So I can't wholeheartedly say that listening to sad songs is bad for you if you are if you are already prone to low moods. I can understand that for some people, but not all. I can't just say that across the board. Sad music definitely has its place. Like, for example, I remember when I would be riding around town. And you know, my mo my mood would get a little low. It's had to be some years ago. I used to listen to New Orleans State of Mind by Currency. I always love that beat, but it's real low. It has this really chilling sound. And the stuff that he's talking about in that song is actually pretty heavy. But it ended up canceling out the negative mood that I was in. I was, you know... Like you bounce into somebody that has that same energy as you and it's like you like being around that person and it lifts you up. Sad music definitely has its place. And going into the final segment, the final, <laughs> the final submission for this segment on two pennies. We got a big one. Ooh, this, ooh, this one's a big one. But it comes from <clears throat> from Louisiana as well. And it reads... There has been discussion on how sexually repressed men, uh oh, specifically black cis heterosexual men, uh oh, oh, there's been discussion on how sexually repressed they are now. Oh, and the women who choose to be with them as well. Do you agree with it? Why do you think that is? To add on to that last one, I'm not talking about they don't have a freedom to an abundance of sexual partners. Okay. I'll, cause, oh, we. Okay. All right. All right. I'm glad they added that in because it was about to go in a completely different direction. So let me see. I'm not talking about they don't have the freedom to an abundance of sexual partners, but the limit their mind, I guess I, I think they meant to say two, but to limit their mind to what it is that can be done with their current partner because of the idea of what label it might place onto them or how they might be viewed. Is it fear? Is it a lack of knowledge? Curious to know your thoughts. Ooh, 
Okay. All right. Okay. This is a big one. I'm just going to break it down like this. What I'm hearing when I read all of this, it just screams lack of communication. It just screams lack of communication. But it stems from kind of how things are when it comes to the dabbling between men and women. Now, they said black, cis, heterosexual men. And they also said the women that they're with. I have to assume they're referring to black women as well. So let's play in that ballpark to set up the the example, right? What I'm seeing here is a lack of communication, but it's not without good reason. You know how we go through different periods, different decades, you know, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. We have things that we see as cool. They're kind of the thing to do. Our tendencies based on what's going on in our environment, in our culture and whatnot. I've been seeing a lot of women saying that they want the, they want high value men. Now this has absolutely nothing to do with the, what this person just submitted to me. Rock with me for a second. I'm getting around to it. And then you would hear that the person would, they don't want people with a nine to five job. They already have to have six figures, super successful. I think six, six, six is like the new thing. Got to be six feet, six figures, at least six <clears throat> endowed. So some of the tendencies from the past decades, I mean, there's a, there's normally been a whole lot of gossip. And scamming when it comes to dating. And the women were playing in that field just as much as the men were. But what that does is that it sets a bad precedent for future dating situations. So let's say a man has already experienced a couple rough runarounds or he heard about how the dating climate is. He would be less likely to divulge anything about himself or any critical information to a person that he's just now newly seeing. Cause I mean, it could switch up on him in a flip, you know, just drop of it could switch up just like that. Him being all throughout the internet is one text message away. It really is. It's, it's become so easy to try and ruin somebody's character at the flick of your fingers, flick of the wrist. And a lot of people would say it's the man's fault for picking a woman like that. That could potentially do that to them. I'm still going, it's like, I'm still getting to it. Just rock with me for a second. People would say that it's on the man for choosing a woman that's like that. He should be more perceptive. He should be able to tell which woman is like that and which one isn't. That's the thing. Women can be very manipulative. And they're really good at it. Props. They're super good at it. I think I spoke on it in a previous video. There was this time where I met one of my friends girl he was dating somebody and when i first met her oh it seemed like he just picked the freshest apple oh she had such a nice temperament she was so polite and you know they actually had a very long relationship once they moved in together she switched outside of the face You couldn't get me to believe that that was the same person. But that person was always there. She was hiding it. She was hiding it. And you might say, he should have been able to tell. But people lie. We can't pretend like people don't lie. We know. We know people lie. So there's no real way to see it. Now, in the same vein, while we're talking about the tendencies on women's side... You also have the tendency on men's side. When it comes to addressing the men, you have to understand that there is a responsibility in having a good woman. There's a certain way that you should treat a woman. Our tendencies, culture, don't really go along with that for whatever reason. Whatever reason. I don't get it. So now we come back to It gets so much worse, though. It gets so much worse. I can't go back yet. It gets so much worse. It's going to take a minute. Rock with me for a second. 
so we just talked about the tendencies on black women's side, black men's side. I know there are outliers. If I'm not talking about you, I'm not talking about you. But if we're ever going to address a problem, we have to be able to look at the majority and actually discuss what it is we can do about it. Right? So, everyone knows, on the men's side, we have dogs. On the women's side, we have cold-hearted women. These are normally people who have been run through, messed over in the dating pool, right? They had their bad run in. Someone got over on them. People get hurt. It's a messy game that we're playing. It's gross. But no one really stops to talk about how one is creating the other. Dogs beget cold-hearted women. Cold-hearted women beget dogs. And what's worse is that some people are doomed from the jump. Because cold-hearted women can raise cold-hearted women. And dogs can raise dogs. So as soon as they go out into the dating pool, they're already bad. And the people they come in contact with, the cycle continues. It's a never-ending whirlwind. It's a mess. Pointing out the flaws in the other side won't fix this. You have to do your own homework. It takes a certain level of, what's the word, autonomy? It takes a certain level of autonomy and checking your peers, those that you stand with, not against. You shouldn't be standing against anybody in the first place. It's completely ridiculous, but that's another topic for another time. Keep rocking with me, because I'm still getting to what this person just sent in to me. So outside of all the toxicity, the tendencies of black men and black women... Um, the never ending cycle of creating those people that ruin the dating pool for yourself outside of all of that, you have to have good communication. I told you at the very beginning, what I'm seeing here is a lack of communication. And the reason why there's a lack of communication is because it's not really safe right now. You have to be able to put a tr trust in somebody that could switch up on you in the drop of a dime. And that's tough. That's really hard to do. And you might say something along the lines of, if you're not strong enough to do it, don't date. But that's dismissive of the greater issue that we're dealing with. So what I'm seeing, but to go back to my point, what I'm seeing here is a lack of communication. Door checking. <laughs> I call it door checking, but being more upfront. It got to a point, I think I was halfway through high school where I was so tired of those jitters, those butterflies, that feeling where it's like, oh, I'm about to talk to this girl. I really, I would really like to, you know, go out with her and whatnot. And I just completely cut it. It was the same thing like with my fear of heights. I was like, I'm so tired of this getting in the way. So I was like, mm, cut it. So I just started being really upfront and frank. Those of you that went to high school with me would actually remember it. You probably remember something like this, but I just really started being upfront and frank. But it cut out a lot of the issue because you knew exactly why I was there and I want to know exactly what you're looking for. And we can actually, if we've come, if we're compatible, we're compatible. And then there's like no time lost because we were able to just lay it all out right there. And it's like, yeah, we might be able to make this work or. Ah, man, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Instead of losing two years tiptoeing around what was what you really wanted to do or what you really had in mind, you just saved all that time. And the saving of time is not the primary us uh, is not the thing to focus on. It's the communication, how it's changed. Now you know exactly what they're there for. Some people like to cling to you should take the time to get to know the person, this, that, and the third. That's how this gets wrong. That's how it goes wrong. So you're saying that people are sexually repressed. I can see people being sexually repressed if the things that they really want to do, they feel as though they can't discuss because they feel like they would be looked at a certain way. That goes for the man and the woman. I won't agree. I don't. You asked if I agree with it. I don't agree that it is specifically black cis heterosexual men that are sexually repressed. 
But as far as what do I think this is that's causing it? Lack of communication in a hazardous dating market. And as far as being open-minded with your sexual partner, if you guys are truly interested in each other and you guys have already figured this out from your interactions, maybe you would like to take it a step further and just jump in the pool, huh? Just lay out, this is the stuff I'm into. And boy, if you hit it big and they're into the same stuff as you, step on the glass. You made it. And if it didn't, if it didn't work, I'm sorry. He's like, move on to the next person. How many people are in America alone? Just keep your options open. Be forthright. Now, I'm telling people to be forthright. And the people who try this might try it now and run into that brick wall because the dating pool is hazardous. We need to talk about having better communication out the gate. If you're going to try to address an issue like being sexually repressed into a relationship, like well into a relationship, because you shouldn't reach that point well into a relationship. It's like, is it fear? Yeah, some of it's fear, but it's what I told you. There is a ten. There's a tendency on the woman's side to gossip. And as soon as they hear something, as soon as the dude decides that he wants to open up, which they which a lot of women tell men to do. It ends up biting them in the butt. You take a chunk off too. He should be more perceptive and try to figure out which girl is actually okay to be like that around. They camouflage really well. And the sooner we admit this, the sooner we can move further on to try and figure out an actual solution. They're really good at camouflage. (laughs) Men are too. Really good at camouflage. Both sides. It's ridiculous. It's almost like they're dressed for war. They're really good at camouflage. And as soon as they get what they want, they take the camouflage off and ask you, why are you still here? That's not exactly how it plays out, but I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, ultimately it's a lack of communication. I'm not going to stop saying that. It's a lack of forthright communication early on which leads to these bigger issues down the line like people being sexually repressed now why specifically black cis heterosexual men i don't know but the person who sent this in specified that i'm gonna have to look into it i'm gonna check on that but no in a greater sense it's a lack of communication i hope you're not years into your relationship and haven't really divulged what you're really into and you're just sitting there grinding your teeth at night because you can't really do what it is that you want to do. Just got to talk. Hopefully it's with somebody that you can actually trust. And to all my dogs and cold-hearted women, please, just tear each other apart. If you can see somebody's actually a good person, and you can tell, you can tell, For the most part. (laughs) Don't make more dogs or cold-hearted women. If you want things to get better, let things be better. We've already kind of messed stuff up for us. We don't have to mess it up for people coming up underneath us. But then again, that would be the selfless thing to do, and we tend to be selfish. That's going to wrap it up for our first segment of Two Pennies. Did you think any of these pennies were worth anything? Were they worth two pennies? Were they worth a nickel? Were they completely worthless? Let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. You can catch us on Instagram, catch us on Twitter. If you want to submit some stuff, reach out to us on either one of those platforms. And you guys have a nice night. I'm black, and it's this long. See you.